Wins, eights, and uh, this promises to be a real dust-up here. The Netherlands, Canada, putting that crew together to go to Poznan and try and qualify. Australia, who uh, are looking so strong and did well in Munich, they took the victory. But here are the Dutch. The Dutch, who uh, got a bronze medal back in the World Championships in uh, 2005. They're on the far side in lane one in those traditional orange vests. Here are the uh, Canadians, and in the stroke seat, it's Jane Rumble with Darcy Marquardt, the uh, 2006 Women's Pairs World Champions. And this is a crew packed with talent. So is this one. This is Australia with Sarah Hurd. Uh, in the stroke seat, Sarah Tate at seven. Elizabeth Patrick is the Australian uh, coxswain. And then the United States. Well, they're world champions for the past two seasons, the United States. Mary Whipple, uh, a standard member of that crew in the stroke seat. Karen Davis, in, sorry, in the coxes seat. Karen Davis is the stroke and a good all in seven. And then uh, moving along and next to them, Germany. Germany, Anina Rupel in the coxswain seat, Elke Hippler, very experienced uh, stroke, and sitting behind her, Nina Wengert at uh, seven, Nadine Schmutzler and Nicole Zimmerman at six and five. And finally, Great Britain in lane six, Hello. Caroline O'Connor in the uh, coxswain seat, and it's Jessica Jane Hello. Eddy uh, in the stroke seat Australia. with Katie Greaves at seven. United States of America, Germany, Great Britain, attention. Good start with the Canadians, two from the top of your picture in the white eight. Germany off quickly there. There are 42 strokes a minute on strokes two through five. And uh, Canada now winding it up, but uh, be interesting to see who shows out in front as they get out of time. Great Britain, bronze medalists in Munich last year with almost exactly the same crew. Um, they're out on six. They're going to find this a real struggle, even if they are hanging on now. It's only 15 strokes into the race. And once that TV drag comes onto them, they're going to find it jolly difficult to hang on to this field. And already four or five athletes, women down on uh, Germany, the nearby crew. In terms of Beijing, you've got to put the Romanians into the mix because, of course, they were Olympic champions in 96 in Atlanta, in Sydney in 2000, and in Athens in 2004. So you can never rule out the Romanians. And indeed, a little earlier today, Elisabetta Lipa, as you see the Americans, Elisabetta Lipa, the most medaled uh, woman rower of all time, was presented with the Thomas Kellogg Medal, uh, Lifetime Award, Achievement Award, Tommy Keller, a former FISA president. And and, uh, well, we, we always wonder whether Leeper might just leap into a boat again for Romania. <laughs> Over there on the far side, just in uh, the top of your picture, you can just see the orange shirts of Holland, and they are leading the crews as they come up to the 500-meter mark. And Holland, coached by René Minders, he was um, in uh, vitriolic mood leaving Munich after the headwind he felt had robbed his crew, not of their position. He wasn't so anxious that they hadn't won it, but that they were so far behind the winners. And he felt that the lane distribution and the wind distribution had been very uh, badly managed in Munich, and he was incandescent with rage about that. So he'll be pleased to see that some of his points have been proved with his lead, his crew in the lead here as they come up to the halfway mark in Lucerne final. That's America in picture. And uh, now uh, Germany. And you can see there, just uh, a little further up there, Australia. And this is yep. women's eights. Well, this is eights racing at its best. United States a little bit up now, but all these crews in touch with one another. The only one to drop out of sight is Great Britain, and that's because they're in lane six. We've discussed that till we're blue in the face. United States now leading with Canada second. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yes, Canada second, and China over on the far side in third. Uh, sorry, Netherlands over on the far side now in third place. Yeah, definite move there by uh, Leslie Thompson, the evergreen coxswain for Canada. And uh, Jane Rumble and Darcy Marquardt. Remember, 
they'll, they'll want to win this if they can, but more importantly in the back of their mind is to get this really working as a unit so they absolutely nail the Poznan Olympic qualification. That's their last chance. That's why the uh, stroke and the seven seat didn't go in the women's pairs. They put everything into this boat. Oh. They're, they've got a bit of work to do, but the United States is the benchmark crew in this event, and they are holding on to the lead, but it looks like Canada are their closest challengers with um, the Netherlands in third, but I don't think that that can last long while Australia are on the premises um, and Germany. Great Britain at the moment out of it. Well, Australia in recent times have done pretty well. They were only bronze medalists last year, but they did win the world title two seasons ago. But at the moment, you can see uh, it is the Americans, Canada, uh, Holland very much on the premises. And you can see Australia in the middle of that uh, little quartet, just ahead of Germany on the near side. There's a general magnetism in eights that you stick closest to the crew next to you, unless you're miles better and just blast away from them. You tend to get stuck to the crew next to you, and Holland and Canada on the far side are stuck to each other, and they are putting the United States under pressure. I don't think it's significant pressure to win it, but I think it's difficult for Australia now being squeezed between China, uh, Canada, and uh, United States. They're finding it hard, and it's the Netherlands who are slipping along up lane one with Canada beside them. Yeah, Canada, another little move there from uh, Leslie Thompson and the crew coming up to the half distance. And you can see, sorry, three-quarter distance. And very little now between America and Canada. And Canada, two moves. And it's brought them to within a third of a second now. Are America aware of what the Canadians are doing? Now, this is the job of the coxswain there to make sure Mary Whipple needs to be looking very closely at what the Canadians to do, but she has to look through the Australians to find them. Now, Australia have come back, having been squeezed out backwards, they're back in touch, and it's now Canada, Australia, and United States stuck together in a trio. And uh, which of them has the sprint over the last 500 metres, we will see. But I think the United States has the strength and the pedigree to hang on to this. But Australia looks to be the crew taking on Canada. Leslie Thompson in the background there, you can see her. But her uh, Elizabeth Patrick for Australia seems to be making the more noise at the moment. Yeah, it's a strong engine room in that uh, Australian eight. Kate Hornsey, Elizabeth Kell, Brooke Bradley and Sally Kehoe at 6, 5, 4 and 3. But now we're in front of the enclosures. They've gone inside the last 250 metres still it is the Americans on the near side Australia challenging, Canada seemingly held, the uh, Dutch can't do any more at the moment and it is Mary Whipple now who's whipping the Americans up to finish the job here and they've moved up the rate the Americans they've found another gear at the business end of the race, Australia trying to close Canada on the far side but it will be the United States who have made that little burst count and they go across the line from Australia go second, Canada third, the Dutch are fourth, then Germany, and finally it will be Great Britain some way back. Well, America, they're not uh, world champions for nothing. The Americans put great store on winning both the men's and women's eights. It is their prime boat. They put their best athletes in there. We've seen, uh, and Canada, frankly, at the same at the moment, as you pointed out, for selection reasons or qualification reasons, uh, have stacked their women's eight and their men's eight as their number one crew. So those are the nations that put uh, a great deal of store in these big boats, the ones where it is easiest to guarantee, if you've got it right, that you hold your position, but the ones where... Susanna Francia, Esther Lofgren, Rachel Jeffers, Anna Goodall, Karen Davis and Mary Whipple. There, you can see Australia in second. Crossing the line third are Canada and the Dutch on the far side. Canada, who last won the Olympic women's eights back in 1992, but you've got to go all the way back to Los Angeles, 19... The big eight is that it's, as I said earlier, it's the race where if you make, if you get it slightly wrong, you've blown it because you don't have room for recovery. On the other hand, if you've got a consistent set of performers, you're more likely to get a consistent result out of an eight than you are out of a smaller boat uh, because it's more of a machine. And uh, you can substitute into a machine more easily than you can into a small bird. The other thing which I think is really good about rowing, which I think is worth actually mentioning because there are a number of other sports which don't enjoy uh, the qualification system that rowing enjoys, Hugh, is the fact that by and large in most categories at the Olympic Games,